Hi there, I'm Jeanette from Glorious Creations, and I'm going to demonstrate how to make a tabret. Some people would call them a hoop, but I'm going to use this 9-inch hoop today. And the first thing we do, we paint the hoop. You can buy these hoops anywhere. You can buy all the stuff, any trims or anything you need right here at GloriousCreations.net if you'd like to make your own. Then I put the hoop on the table and put, I have the Bible here, but a book to hold it. Then we take our different layers. We use six layers is how we do it. Uh, you could do whatever, however many you'd like. And if you order a pack of these for to build your own, you get to pick the colors you want. I happen to be going to demonstrate making a King of Kings tabret, a nine inch, uh, for you. So then we, we use Aileen's glue, craft glue that we get at Walmart. And we just take it and run a line. This is the inside hoop here. Run a line of glue there and I put it in a cup and that holds it so it's handy. Then we put this on the hoop like this and I use we use close pins to hold it. Now if you're doing a nine inch hoop, see how it looks there? If you're doing a nine inch hoop, um, we usually use a pack and a half on a nine inch hoop which would mean we would open up this pack and tear half of it, which we've already done. So I'll just put that glue. And this is to kind of get this uh, tinsel halfway up the hoop, which you'll see. Let's see, why don't it stick there? Some people use a glue gun. We just never have because I would probably be terrible with a glue gun. I'd probably have the whole thing all connected and hooked together. So that's how it looks. And we just put our layers accordingly. And we picked which layers we like. Now this, the second layer on this one we have um, a tinsel called Cracked Ice Gold. You can't really tell it in this light but it's very reflective. It's almost like a, a foil. And the other ones are like a regular, uh, they're called a mylar. So we put these, we just keep on building our layers, and as I go on each one, you'll see I just undo the clothespin, and it sticks enough because it's had enough time since the last layer that it manages. And I don't put a whole lot of glue on it, just enough to hold it and do this third piece. All right. So, and then what we do after we get all six layers on, which I'm not going to do in the demonstration because you can see two of them and you, you get the idea of how we do it, we hang it up for the night to dry. Like we have a coat rack here that you can't really see, but we hang it. Then the next day, we take it down, we take the clips off of it, and this is how our, our colors are laying out on this King of Kings. It has a red on the top, a holograph gold, the next layer down. We love the holograph colors. So then what we do is we move this out of the way because we're going to do something totally different. We're going to put the trim in and stuff. Then we have these centers out of our fabric that we cut. So this particular one digs a white satin center. Here we go. I put this glue. Now remember this is all on the inside hoop. That's because when you put that outside hoop over it, when it's on the inside hoop, that tinsel is not going anywhere. It's staying put. If you put these all on the outside of the outside hoop, it's not going to be long and you're going to have tinsel flying everywhere and they just don't hold up. So we slide this fabric on you see how I've done that? And um, now I'm going to, and I put glue because it's important that you glue around this outside so that these tops are at the fabric are glued in. They don't pull apart. Then you lay that hoop, that outside hoop over it, and you fasten it. Sometimes it's harder than others. You might have to undo the screw of it, like this one is tight. I'm going to undo this screw all the way and put it on. 
it'll slide over. See how that looks? It'll slide over. Then you tighten your screw, pull that down, and you might need to pull a little bit on either side of these for your fabric to lay smooth and, and flat. Then we go and we tip it up and cut the fabric. See this fabric that's around the edge then? We kind of trim that off. So we take scissors and, and I kind of just lay them right along the hoop and cut that fabric off. You got to be careful that you don't cut the tinsel off. We have all colors of tinsel, so whatever you decide, wherever your imagination or the Spirit of the Lord takes you, you can make anything that you would like, and you can use any size. Some people make them on 9 inch, 8 inch, 10 inch. We had a, a gal yesterday was telling us she was making 10 inch, so that's what it looks like. Now, what we do is we take our outside trim which you can get from us once again, or you could, I think Joanne still carries it, but I'm not sure about that, because we order from factories. You lay it up against the screw and measure it right around to the other one. Then you cut it, then you take your glue, Some people like to uh, take their finger and make the glue smooth. I, I don't do that, but that doesn't you know, mean any, any, however you prefer to do it. And I kind of hang on to it here and hang on to it as I'm doing it, going around. Just a thin bead of this glue. You don't have to have a whole huge amount because you can see it'll work. Oops, and the trim did stretch a little bit, so I don't have to have all as much as I had. So I just cut it off. And then it's perfect. It comes round to the screw, as you can see. Like I said, this is just one way of doing it. So many other people, there's other ways, of course. You can uh, wrap, wrap around the edges, and those are really beautiful two but we found this works best for us because we do make a lot of these here at glorious creations then we take we want to put some narrower trim across the top so we take our glue and do this with it and sometimes these edges want to fray out so we put scotch tape on them and even then cut it in half with that you start it a little bit below where the top of the fabric is now that fabric how we decide where to put that fabric is we like to have a nice handhold about this is probably about two inches here where a person can put their hand through it you don't want it, and it also gives you room on the fabric to be able to put designs or writing or anything else that you would like uh, that would help this to point to Jesus Christ. That's our whole goal in these tablets. It's pointing to Jesus Christ in them. Then we take a sequin. Now this is like called a gimp on the top, and it's a, a rayon gimp, and it's narrow. Now we take a sequin trim to put around what we call the smile of the hoop. So we put our bead of glue all the way around like this. And then we take this and we lay it on top and pat it down. And that glue will dry and it dries clear and it dries well. Now I will warn you that if you use satin though, if you get anything on that satin and you try to wash it off, guess what? It stains. It, it makes this watermark on it, so you kind of have to be careful with if you're going to use a satin or something like that. So now we've got, we've trimmed it out this far, as you can see it. 
Now on this particular tabard, this King of Kings, we put a Star of David on it and a crown. We have a beautiful uh, jeweled crown that we use. So I'm going to make this Star of David. And we don't have a pattern for this that we offer, but I can show you how. So you cut it on an angle. I'm going to say I want it to be about that big. And then I'm going to cut six pieces the same. See how those angles are? This angle is this way. This angle is this way, if you can see that. Hope you can. And then I cut six identical pieces to make my Star of David. Um, we've tried using the ribbon that has the wire in it, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's not that you can't use it, but it's better. It, it's easier to use. Sometimes that wire, wired ribbon wants to kink up on you, and it's hard to get it to lay flat. So we get this ribbon actually from all over. Uh, Joann's has it sometimes. Just don't get the wired. I think Offray. I'll look at the brand here and let you know. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. I need another one here. And I know that this might look real simple, and it is real simple. Uh, I've just been doing it for over 20 years, so it makes it a lot simpler. It moves fast. So I don't want, don't anybody get discouraged if they say, wow, I don't, this seems awkward. Because the first time or two you do it, it does seem awkward. But it's like anything else. You get used to it. And you can make your own absolutely gorgeous tabret. As you'll see when we're done here, it'll be beautiful. You don't have to put a Star of David on. We have many styles that don't have a Star of David. But we have a lot of people that love the Star of David in Israel. And this is a very popular one. Once you've done it, it's easy. You know, there are nine scriptures about the tabard in the Word. This isn't just some uh, really cute little worship item. This is a powerful item to use in the worship of the Most High God. Did you know that the tabard was the first worship instrument to be created by God to be worshipped with? And uh, we get that out of Ezekiel 28.13. He says in there, he's talking about Satan. And we, we do know that Satan was a worship leader of heaven's choirs through many theologians. And the Lord is speaking to him. And he said that you have been in the garden and you are very beautiful and covered with stones to denote your beauty and glory. Your tabrets and your pipes were created in you in the day I created you. But because of your beauty, you, the pride rose up and the Lord casted him down. So that word tabret there, when you look it up, it is in the King James Version. It's not in any of the other versions. It changes it to tambourine or timbrel. But in reality, the word is tabret. And the difference in the two are is a tabret is a tabor. And the root of tabor is one drum, or one, I'm sorry, a one-sided drum that they played with um, pipes. And it didn't have jingles on it. It was not a tambourine or a timbrel. And the, the root word tabor has another meaning. And that other meaning is one hoop fitting within another with cloth stretched across for embroidery. And that's why we're using embroidery hoops and making these symbolic prophetic tabrets. There's nine total scriptures for them. So that was the first one, Ezekiel 28, 13, where the Lord says he totally, he created it to be worshipped with. So we're making a symbolic. So as we use it as a wave offering to the Lord, we are symbolically worshipping him with the tabret, the ancient instrument that he created to be worshipped with. Now, I'll give you a couple more scriptures here, but this one is the crown, you see. We got the Star of David on there. See? If you can see it. 
and we're going to lay this crown on here. And we put that like right on the top. And I push it through. But when you use a, a, silk, a silk center or a satin center, anything like that, you don't want to push too hard because you don't want glue going through to the back. This is a double layered piece of fabric. We double layer it. So it's got this fold at the top. So you can see how pretty this is. And then what we finish up with is we put a tassel on it because the Lord says to, there's tassels on the garments to remind him of his word. So when this is dry, I'll tip it up and I'll undo this screw and put this tassel on it for him. And that's basically how we make these tabrets. It's just as easy as that. But you can look on our site and see the scriptures about how these are, how, how they're so powerful. In Isaiah, the Lord says that he himself fights with a tabret, that he lays it on the back of the enemy. So as we're down here worshiping with the tabrets, like an offering to the Lord, a wave offering to the Lord with these beautiful tabrets, the Lord himself is laying it on the back of the enemy in the spiritual realm. And in Jeremiah 31, 4, it says, um, Again I will adorn thee, O virgin of Israel, and you shall again go forth with the tabrets in your dances of them that make with them that make merry. So that's a prophetic statement that before the Lord comes back, he is going to adorn his bride, us, with tabrets once again. Most of us aren't ready for a one-sided drum and a pipe, but we definitely are interested in these beautiful worship wave offerings so um, anyway, there's other scriptures about it, and oh yes, the tabrets, when you wave them, they invite the spirit of prophecy to come in. 1 Samuel 18, 6 is talking about when the women, after the slaughter of the Philistine, came out of all the cities singing and dancing with tabrets and with pipes and instruments of music, and they began to prophesy, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. David had only slain Goliath and the bear. So it was a prophetic statement. Then in 1 Samuel 18, 5, it talks about, no, 10, 5. It says, Samuel has anointed Saul to be king. And he says, go over to the high place of Gibeon, which is Samuel's mountain, the, the home of the prophets. And he said, you'll meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place. And before them, there will be people playing uh, tabrets and pipes and instruments of music. And if you will allow yourself, the spirit of prophecy will come upon you and you'll be changed into a different person. And that's what Saul did. And he got into a prophetic frenzy dance because the spirit of prophecy came upon him. And so the people were even saying, is Saul a prophet? We didn't know that. So as you use these tabrets, you are inviting in the spirit of prophecy, who is himself, Jesus Christ. So you can look up the rest of the tabret scriptures. You can read them on our site, gloriouscreations.net, or you can go to the internet and put in tabrets. In the King James Bible, you can search it out too. So that is how we put together a tabret, and I hope it's helped you and that you've enjoyed it. And we hope to hear from you. You can buy anything that you need to put together your tablet from us at GloriousCreations.net. You'll see it under Create Your Own. So have a great day, and God bless you all. Bye-bye.